Okay, I'm sitting in a Dodge Challenger uh, Hellcat 2023. Um, we're going to talk about kind of troubleshooting, you, you know, uh, diagnosing the vehicle. In this video, you know, we'll look at remote start. We'll look at other potential error codes and, and, and so forth. But um, I do have another video that covers 10 to 15 things that could potentially cause issues with remote start. But in this vi uh, video, we're going to really focus on... Um, professionally diagnosing <clears throat> like remote start issues and how we can take a look at what might be causing a remote start to fail uh, where it turns on runs for about 10 seconds and then turns off or it doesn't work at all <clears throat> so um, the, th this right here is an autel a-u-t-e-l m-k-808 s <clears throat> Uh, I'll put a link in the description to buy this on Amazon. It's about four hundred seventy dollars with tax. Um, that is, you know, if you get if you take your car in to get it uh, diagnosed professionally, um, the cost of a, di a diagnostic is usually about two hundred fifty dollars. So this, you know, costs, um, you know, uh, diagnostic is basically half. One diagnostic is basically half the price of this. You can use this on any vehicle. You'll you'll have it for many 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 years. Um, it's totally worth it <clears throat> to have one of these. If you don't have it, it's absolutely worth it. I also have another video on my channel about using this to make sure that you're ready to go in and get your smog check, <clears throat> your smog test. So check that out. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I'm like having allergies right now. But uh, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into uh, diagnostics, right? And uh, in this this is under my favorites here, but you know. There's like <clears throat> legitimately like a thousand vehicles in here, okay? Makes and models and uh, whatever manufacturers and it pretty much does everything. But we'll go to favorites. I'm going to click on Dodge. Um, <clears throat> and then um, on this page right here, we have auto selection and manual selection. This is for your VIN, right? So this is for putting in the VIN number of your vehicle so it can you know, uh, identify exactly what vehicle we're talking about. I'm going to hit auto selection, automatic selection. You want the vehicle to be in accessory mode, ACC or run. The engine does not have to be on for this. Okay. It doesn't. Um, so I'm going to hit, um, <clears throat> auto select here. It comes up with this screen right here. You can type the VIN in manually if you want to, or you can hit read in the bottom right hand corner, and that's going to read the VIN number automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, it comes back with the vehicle, 2023 Challenger Hellcat. Is this your VIN number? Yes, it is. Okay, and we're going to go in here in about two seconds. It's gathering the information. <clears throat> Okay, this we can skip, so I'm just going to hit escape on that. <clears throat> we're going to go into diagnostics, and we're going to click auto scan. Okay, this is the very first thing that you want to do, and you want to check for any fault codes, okay? If you have any fault codes at all, <clears throat> okay, uh, remote start is probably not going to work, okay? Or if the check engine light is on or you have fault codes, it's probably not going to work. So we have fault codes. You saw that. Okay, we have two fault codes. Okay, so we've got PDM, uh, passenger door module. Uh, one fault code <clears throat> there, and we've got body control module with two fault codes, right? So is my remote start going to work because I have BCM? Probably not, okay? It's probably not going to work because I have whatever's going on here. Now, let's look at this uh, passenger door uh, module uh, fault code here. Okay, and we can click on read. And we can see here that we have a B25B4A2A pulse switch stuck. Okay, so what's the pulse switch? Um, <clears throat> you know how when you 
you go to open your door and the window kind of goes down a little bit and then you close your door and the window goes back up a little bit. The pull switch is what actuates that movement of the window when it comes down about like a three eighths to half of an inch and then goes back up when you're opening and closing your door. That's the pull switch. If that malfunctions and your window doesn't come down or doesn't open when you're opening and closing your door, you can cause damage to the vehicle, to the glass or to your seals, etc. That's a that's a problem, right? <clears throat> so one really cool, cool feature here is that if you're like, well, I don't know what a pulse switch is. Like, what is that? What does that mean? You can actually click on search down here at the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit search. And then what it'll do is it'll open up Google and it'll put that in there and then you can see, right? And one of the things here <clears throat> uh, you can see here is that uh, we have this release from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, this PDF document. Uh, if we click on this, uh, you know, we can take a look at that that PDF document potentially. It should open in the browser. Maybe it won't open in the browser window because it's a PDF. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's not opening. But I've already read that PDF document, so um, we're good. And then uh, so we're going to leave that code there and I'm going to hit escape to go back. I'm going to hit escape again to go back. And then we're going to look at that uh, bo those body control module faults right here. So um, I didn't have a check engine light on, okay? I had no check engine light on my vehicle. But clearly we have some issues, right? This car only has 3,700 miles on it. How can it be having issues? I'll tell you how. It's an American car. That's how. So um, let's go ahead and hit read codes on this one. And we'll see what we have here. Okay. Right signature lamp control, short circuit to battery or open. Wow, look at that. Left signature lamp control, short circuit to battery or open, right? So what's the signature lamp, right? Well, let's find out. Let's go ahead and hit search. Short explanations, right? So there's some videos right there that cover the shorts. Um... Okay, so we got a couple videos there. We have Dodge Ram Lighting Fault. Okay, so you got some there, how to do it, right? Parking lamp, control circuit, whatever. Okay, so... Short circuit to battery are open. So, you know, we've got those issues. Um, yeah, let's, uh, well, let's go back. So let's hit escape. Let's go escape. And let's go back to uh, diagnostics here. I'm going to hit escape here. Make sure you want to exit. Yes. And here I'm going to go into uh, control units. Okay. And I'm going to go body. And then I'm going to go body controller, BCM, body control module. And one of the things that we can do here is we can look at um, a system check. And under system check, you can see here, uh, view remote start inhibit data. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, anything that's in here. Uh, is uh, something that is causing your remote start to not work at all. <clears throat> so you can't, you push the button and nothing happens. Over here, we have remote start abort data. Uh, and what that will do is that will tell you what are the things that are causing your remote start to abort after it's been initialized. So the car starts, but it only runs for about 10 seconds and then it turns off by itself. That is a remote start abort. So if we look at inhibiting data, um, we can click OK. And we have, it'll store the last four events of remote start um, inhibits. And event one is the most recent event and event four is the oldest event, okay? So we'll look at event one. That's the most recent event where I could not remotely start my vehicle. It wouldn't work. It'll tell you exactly what, was the cause of the inhibition. And that was that the trunk was ajar. So my trunk was ajar. 
It tells you what the odometer reading was at the time that that happened and how many times <clears throat> you have had um, key starts versus remote starts since that happened, right? So that's a, um, now we'll look at um, aborting, right? So this is where it runs for 10 seconds and then it turns off. And we can see um, the last event when it was aborted, when my remote start was aborted and why it was aborted. So we'll look at that. And here you can see crank no start. So I'll tell you exactly what happened there. Um, my battery was about mm, almost two years old and it was no good anymore. I think too much water inside the battery had evaporated. Yeah, I probably could have put some more distilled water into it and brought it back to life, but I just it's under warranty, so I just got a new battery. I had to replace the battery, right? And uh, at the time, the day when I decided I have to replace it, I went to go remote start it, and there wasn't enough uh, amperage coming out of that battery to actually crank the engine over completely and get it to start. So remote start failed, and uh, and that's then and then that was that event. So bottom line, you know, uh, if you get one of these guys. <clears throat> On Amazon, I can tell you right now that it's worth every single penny. There's no more guessing games. You don't have to like stress about <clears throat> well, why isn't it working or why is this? Why do I have this problem or that problem? Like what's malfunctioning? Whatever. Like, oh, why is my battery draining? Like, like my battery is only like less than two years old. Like, why is it failing? Like, why do I have to trickle charge my battery? Right. Well, apparently, right. I think it's pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty obvious that. <clears throat> you know, the issue with my, with my battery is like what we saw, um, earlier, <clears throat> I probably shouldn't have exited all the way out, but I did. It's like what we saw earlier, uh, those air codes with the short circuits in the, some kind of lights on my vehicle, like the rear parking lights or something like that, um, you know, who knows, right? Who knows why that's happening? Um, <clears throat> but that could that can create a uh, parasitic draw, parasitic drain a situation on the battery, which causes the battery to wear down, you know, prematurely, right? And it's actually pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty cool that um, you get that kind of information uh, from, from this system, right? Because... In older vehicles, especially, if there was a short or a parasitic draw, that wouldn't show up. Like, you would have to trace that, check, trace that down by manually, by hand, and figure out exactly where that's happening. But this actually will tell you, which is amazing. <clears throat> Obviously, it doesn't apply to all situations, but um, in this situation, it's, it's there, you know? Right signature lamp control. So, pretty cool. All right, guys. I hope this video was uh, informative to you. Again, this is the Autel MK808S. Link in the description to buy it on Amazon. It's worth every penny.